Here's our new locomotive housed in a secondary engine shed. Trouble is, as you can see, it isn't connected to the rest of Karen's little railway. It has to get across this grass and onto one of the tracks here. Possibly, I think the one where the wagon is is the most likely. That's the main line. And the solution may be those two bits of rail in the background there. It may not have been entirely clear in the last little bit of clip what I was trying to achieve. So hopefully this will make it a little clearer. Track leading off using our ramp from the main line. Curving over other tracks, across the grass, leading into the engine shed. A bit of rail bending and rail ties required to achieve this. Here's a useful KLR tip. If you spend a lot of time sitting around on rails, it's a lot more comfortable if you just put a board across the rails rather than finding yourself being pinched by the rails. We now need to get this bent round to join onto there successfully. They could just spring it into place because the rail is surprisingly springy uh, over this sort of length. But we find it to be a better solution to put some permanent bend in. To do that, we use our Jim Crow, a rail bending device. It simply consists of two prongs that hook over the rail and this screw thread, which can be tightened against the rail, thus causing the very small imperceptible kink. A series of small kinks creates a smooth curve. So we just hook over like this and using a bar can tighten up a bit. And I don't know whether you can see the end there just bending around a bit probably almost imperceptible. Move along a bit further, another little bend. Each time it springs back as well, so you have to allow for that. But the gradual process of adding more and more bend, gradually tightening up, will eventually give us a nice smooth curve to join on over there. If one bends your rail a bit too far, you can simply unbend it by putting it on the other way and just tightening up to pull the rail outwards. So it's very easy to adjust the rail to exactly where you want it to be. And with a little practice, it gets easier and easier over time. I should also mention that I've placed this sleeper here just to try and keep everything a bit more level. And that inspires me to actually fit a conventional wooden sleeper in at that point and try and find some bits of um, bar to tie the rails together that will create a gradual slope up there. I'll just mark this for cutting up there. Just put a chalk mark just so I can see it. That's better. As you can may or may not be able to see. Sleepers have plenty of uses beyond being sleepers. Useful support for all sorts of jobs. Just a quick slice through here. Helps if you plug it in first. Then the rails have been curved to a nice smooth curve each side ready now for adding the ties to hold them in place. I've had to record a narration over this section because of the wind noise in the original. Here you can see me placing some of the wooden spaces in order to get the rails the correct distance apart. In the foreground you can see some of the metal ties which are at the moment quite long, the idea being that they may well help hold everything level whilst the locomotive traverses this raised up bit of track. 
Now it's gradually increasing heights from the foreground back towards the shed in order to make a nice gradual slope for the locomotive to climb up. All that remains to be done now is to weld them in place. The welds only need to be small tack welds just to hold the steel together as I intend reusing all these pieces of steel at some point in the future when this layover track is no longer necessary and a more permanent solution has been found. Well I've every confidence I'm going to be able to get the engine in and out whether I've got the energy to move the uh, tracks out of the way at the end of the day remains to be seen. See if we can get back in the same place again. Success, I think. Let's just check.